Hello and welcome. In this video, I am going to show you how to segment the lateral geniculate nucleus. This dataset is acquired at the 70 magnetic resonance imaging scanner using MP2RH protocol. And what you are now looking at is the uni contrast that is similar to T1 weighted contrast. Here you can see that I loaded my image nifty file into ITK snap and here I am zooming in zooming out you can see that by clicking the middle mouse button i can move around the brain image and by the way this is just a partial coverage brain image so it's not a whole brain data set this data set is at 0.35 millimeter isotropic resolution and it's from a living human if you are curious you can see the video description to reach to this data set and maybe read the paper about that Okay, now here I am basically using the mouse wheel button to scroll through different slices of the image. You can also use page up and page down buttons on your keyboard. Right now I am going to show you a very important part of ITK Snap, the image contrast menu. In this menu you can manipulate your color map. For instance here I have a grayscale color map that maps the value written in each voxel into a gray level. And here you can see that I am adjusting the minimum point and the maximum point to make my image appear darker or brighter. And since this is a simple manual segmentation mini tutorial, I'm going to show you using this menu to basically optimize the local tissue contrast so that your eyes can see easily the local tissue that you are going to segment. And here I'm optimizing it for the lateral geniculate nucleus, which you see underneath the crosshair. And this might be, of course, hard to see for an inexperienced eye, but if you look at several post-mortem images that are publicly available and in vivo MRI datasets and read a few papers, you will be easily able to locate this by navigating yourself using the gross anatomy and also the local tissue contrast. After adjusting the contrast, now I'm going to show you the brush option that I'm clicking right now. And here you can have access to several different brushes in ITK Snap. And you, the important parameter is selecting the brush size and the brush shape that I'm going to show you soon. So here you can see that now I'm going to draw the border around a single slice of the brain image where I can see the lateral geniculate nucleus structure. And here you can see that using the lower left panel, I can adjust the opacity of this red line that I have labeled. And there are also uh, keyboard shortcuts that you can use. For instance, S, A, and D buttons also control these opacity options. One can toggle, the others can adjust. Here you can see that I made my brush size really large and then draw with it just to exemplify how the brush size works. And now I am changing the opacity using my keyboard buttons. Another important point is the brush shape. You can see that now my brush shape is square or a rectangle, but I can adjust it to be more circular. And you can see the uh, shape button there in the left menu. And you can see the difference between a large, like a rectangular brush versus a circular one. Of course, um, for segmenting such subcortical structures or many other structures, it is more handy to have a circular brush. So now I selected a circular brush with a decent size, six uh, voxels in diameter, uh, I believe. And now I'm going to basically go through slices and then start labeling my subcortical structure. One important and useful panel is the fourth panel that you see on the lower left um, part of the screen, where you can basically immediately 3D render your segmentation, the area that you just draw over. And this can be quite handy to sometimes navigate yourself and also have a feeling of the overall shape of the structure that you are labeling. Here you see that I went to one higher slice and drawing the LGN around there and one higher drawing again. And now next thing we can do is to update this 3D view and see what has changed. 
hopefully you can see that that once I've clicked on update it become ticker and if you of course I continue doing it it will be more and more looking like a meaningful shape of the LGN one handy thing to do is to enable continuous update if you don't have a really large or really highly detailed segmentation and basically you can in real time segment voxels and see in 3d the area that you are covering here i'm just going to speed up a bit and go through roughly the lgn initial pass segmentation it is important to sometimes switch the perspective that you are looking at the brain to be able to see more easily the contrast between different tissues around LGN or the borders of LGN you can see that sometimes I am using the coronal view sometimes I am using the transversal view or sagittal view to basically cover as much area as possible one handy option to be aware of is the smoothing of the 3D rendering menu here you can see that it was disabled by default in my computer but you can enable it and uh, hopefully you can catch the difference that it will basically smooth the 3D structure that you are rendering on the lower left panel and you can increase the of course smoothing level if you want to see a smoother structure there it can be sometimes useful now the rough initial segmentation is done you can see that there are some edges but overall LGN is covered and I'm not going to go further in this video there are like many other methods to smooth it make the borders better fit to the underlying contrast but here you can see that I am just checking with and without the labeled area going through uh, in different perspectives and see if I covered the structure uh, one handy thing to check is to have a look at the other hemisphere and the symmetric counterpart of the structure for instance here LGN you can get a better feeling of if the area that you are covering is the right one by checking the symmetry between different sides of the brain and then you just save your file and be done with it that's all for today see you next time